If you think your website is just a place to list your prices, you're doing it wrong. My fellow YouTuber Jess Creatives said this on Instagram a couple weeks ago and I had to smile because it's so true. Now, the thing that I, get, that I see a lot of creatives get wrong is that they use their website as a portfolio piece instead of the powerful marketing piece that it has the potential to be. Now, the thing that I see a lot of website designers get wrong is they think of beauty first whenever it comes to brand and website design. If you want to know how to get clients from your website, then you have to think strategy first, beauty second. Now, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you are ready to have clients landing in your inbox ready to work with you. Now, the first thing that you have to think whenever it comes to designing a website, clients want to know what is your one money-making offer. This is one of the reasons why I believe our website is so successful in driving leads is because it focuses on one main offer, the signature experience. Now, let me know in the comments below, what is your one money-making offer? Our copy is speaking to one type of client. Our SEO keywords are dedicated to ranking for one type of relevant key phrase or key phrases. Now, for a lot of creatives, they're trying to speak to way too many audiences about way too many offers. Let's take a photographer for an example. Recently, we were planning a trip to Savannah, Georgia, and I was looking for a family photographer. Most of the websites that I went to showcased weddings, families, maternity, newborns, all on the same website. Their websites became convoluted because they were trying to speak to way too many people about way too many different offers. Whenever it comes to marketing, you cannot be everything to everyone. Think about how much more powerful your website would be, your brand message, even your Instagram grid, and really your marketing in general would be if you double down on one money-making offer. I'm gonna show you what I mean with one of our clients' websites. Jenny Engel, she is an adoption photographer, and we centered her brand message in her website around the one main offer. Now, her brand message is stronger than it was. She's also ranking number one for relevant keywords like Indianapolis adoption photographer, and she's booking ideal clients from her website. Now that we have a money-making offer, we can work to simplify our pages. My job as a website designer is to get website visitors from point A landing on your website to point B taking the next step, whether that is booking a consultation call or filling out the contact form as quickly as possible. And one of the ways that we can do that is by moving non-essential pages for service-based businesses down to the bottom. The pages that we really care about are going to be your home, about galleries, experience, and contact page. Anything other than that, including your blog, needs to be moved down to the footer of your website because on your website, we don't want people to get lost meandering around your website and never actually convert into a lead. So limiting the number of pages that they browse and get information from can help them to move along and convert faster. We wanna focus on optimizing those core pages. And if you have Google Analytics set up, that's going to be a lot of help. Inside Google Analytics, I want you to go down to behavior, site content, and then all pages. There's two things to pay attention to, your bounce rate and your exit rate. Bounce rate is going to be whenever somebody comes to your website and they immediately leave. And for a bounce rate, anything from 40 to 50% is average. Anything from 30 and under is really good. Now exit pages, I want you to look at percentage of exit. That's whenever they come to your website, they look around, um, and then they leave on that specific page. When looking for, um, for what pages to optimize, you wanna look at the high percentage of a bounce rate. So for us, if you look at ours, you can see that one of them is the brand show it results. And they entered on this page, and then the bounce rate was 100%. Um, that's okay because I sent those that page specifically to those people um, and they bounced after looking at it. So I know what that is. Now in terms of percentage of exit, all of these are pretty same. Don't worry about the contact page because obviously if somebody has looked at your contact page, they're going to exit after looking at that one. Um, but go ahead and look at which one has your highest exit rate. If it is your experience page or your pricing page that they are exiting on, 
maybe you're not providing enough value so that whenever they see your prices, they're not ready to either pay that much. So what you need to do is a better job of providing your value up front so that you seem worth your price. Another good thing to take a look at is going to be your contact page. And the way that we optimize those is we make our clients' contact pages really boring on purpose. We don't want there to be any call to actions or any buttons that are going to divert their attention away from the contact page. Once they get to the contact page, they're so close to converting. And so we just want them to fill out the form, which takes me to my next step. On your contact page, please limit what you have on your contact page as to what you're asking. We like to have it as like first name, email address, uh, maybe like a start date or an event date, and then budget. There's one last question that's super, super important. How did you hear about us? Add that to your contact form if it's not already on there, because that's going to help you determine where to put your future marketing dollars in time, because the people who are filling out your contact form are converting into leads. So if you know where they're coming from, then you know what marketing is working for you. All right, if you wanna know more about how to create a website that books more clients, then go ahead tap the subscribe button and hit the bell so that you never miss an episode. Also, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up because it really does help my channel. All right, last thing, if you want to know more about the brand message and how to craft one that really stands out from the competition, then you're going to want to stick around for the next video because we're going to be talking about standing out from the crowd with a brand message.